from uh, looking at uh, all the stages or phases of uh, the software uh, development uh, life cycle that is STLC. Now we moved on to, uh, to the understanding of uh, different models that are widely used in SDLC. Okay, so we will look into that. Um, uh, there are different types of uh, SDLC models that are commonly uh, or widely used uh, in the industry. So out of which uh, the most common one, the most famous one is uh, our waterfalls, waterfall, waterfall method. So this particular SDLC example is the most, uh, most uh, straightforward type of model and it is essentially the oldest two. The main characteristic of this methodology is that programmers focus on each step one after the other. Anyway, we will be looking into this uh, uh, method in detail in coming videos or coming slides but still I will I'm, I'm, I'm trying to give a brief about this. So after uh, finishing the first from the beginning to the end they jump on to the next phase and this continues. This is how this uh, waterfall method works. Uh, this is the reason for its name as there is a mini plan for each of the phases and they waterfall into their next after completion. So there is of course a drawback uh, to this as well. When one does not complete the smallest details that can stagnate the entire procedure. And uh, the second one uh, that we have in our pipeline is Agile model. Agile model, Agile SDLZ model. Uh, here, an Agile, as the name says, it's the fastest, it's the quickest, it's the qualitative. Oh, okay, enough for adjectives. Let's see what it is. Uh, a major characteristic of the Agile model is that it demarcates the product into different cycles and produces a working product quickly. Therefore, there is a succession of many religions. That's a common point of this process. After each of these religious is, releases is tested, that back information is used in the following version for more importance improvement however there is a drawback in this model and and uh, that uh, revolves around the dependency on uh, customer interaction indeed in some particular cases focusing more heavily on these interactions often turns the development in the wrong direction yeah it happened i have seen uh, these kind of examples in my seven years of longest career of course i think it's a longest career of software uh, software uh, life that's fine but i've seen these kind of examples even i'm looking at those examples even now though i'm in a product based company so then then uh, the third one that we are going to look uh, is our v shaped model the name as like it's good it's like v shape a six pack uh, body shape that's that's nice so here what happens uh, in this uh, model uh, is it's a continuation or a similar uh, to the waterfall method model in its essence like the previously mentioned model this two concentrate on the testing process in each level of the process and similar uh, to the waterfall model again, it seems the same kind of problem. So here what happens uh, when, so basically uh, when this normally you, v, v model used, 
So when you are dealing with a small or medium sized projects, that time vModel is very helpful and plenty of technical resources are available or requirements are clearly defined. That means there won't be any requirement changes or no upgradation of requirements or you're not going to uh, come, at, come up with uh, new requirements. In these cases, we shipped uh, uh, model, model also works well. And uh, the next one, what we have is iterative model the name says it's iterative let's see what it is so here in iterative model the main point of concern is the iterative model is the is is the concentration on repetitiveness the main focus of iterative model is uh, that it concentrates mainly on repetitiveness in this, the top software uh, developers who are using this particular version of the SDLC example makes it very quickly. So after doing, so they test the software over, over, over and over and over and over again and keep on improving on the previous versions with uh, little cost. Uh, that's the benefit of course uh, uh, this leads to the creation of more successful versions in the following line as for the drawback of this model that lies in the quantity of resources it takes up that's it of course it's damn good that you're doing the doing it over and over and over so you'll get a quality product but how much resources you're using either it may be an up either it may be an infrastructure or it may be uh, time whatever it may be or man force or workforce so it's huge so that's the biggest uh, flip side of uh, or biggest uh, uh, negative point uh, for this one uh, so that lies in the coin and if not checked in time this number increases highly uh, then so then when this uh, uh, model is apt for uh, which uh, condition is it is apt so when major requirements are defined developers are learning new technology during the project or there are chances of changes in near future if any of these scenarios are exist then you can go with the iterative model that would work well then the next thing that's left in our pipeline is a spiral model it's a spiral model in spiral model out of all the software development examples uh, the one that is the most flexible is the spiral as the name says, it's a spiral. <laughs> okay. Uh, it concentrates a lot on a reputation. If you see iterative model or spiral model, as the name says, basically they concentrate a lot on a reputation. When there is a reputation, obviously the quality will be good. But on flip side, the the cost also would be too high because of using too much of resources. Okay, that's fine. Uh, if it is fine, then you can go with it. In this, in this, the SDLC goes uh, through each of the stages vigorously. Uh, it checks the planning of the process, what the design is like, what the build is, how the testing process is occurring, etc. If any discrepancy appears, this methodology goes back to the first step and continue. That's what. That's why it's a spiral one. This repetition occurs over and over and over through each phase and each time. The stages uh, showcase uh, advancement until finally the software is ready for deployment. So now the same question occurs or appears in our brain that when to use a spiral model. Uh, in certain scenarios when the project is for a long term when there are frequent uh, religious releases or the creation of a prototype is compulsory for medium to high risk pro project basically if the risk uh, uh, appetite is high uh, if the risk if you can take a high risk appetite uh, in these kind of projects uh, we can use spiral model so the next thing is uh, the one that that's coming up is a little weird one but it's a it's a nice one that's the big bang model that's a big bang model so in big bang model among all the models 
this is a very high risk model the maximum of the resources in the big bang model focuses on the development phases this is more suitable for smaller projects rather than the bigger and more complicated ones there is of course uh, a drawback in this model too and that's the lack of definition stage of each of the methods in fact not even the most important requirements of each each of the parts are mentioned is in this option so then the next question arrives again the same question that's when can we use this where this fits well when there is no pre-planning when there are a limited amount of resources and if it is it's suitable uh, it's a suitable for a short term project and good for study and learning purpose so now by and large most of the uh, widely used models that we have covered here then one question might pop up in your brain so we have uh, so many models then so when can we, when do we when can we use these models where we have to use it so there is no hard and fast rule that this model only fits for this like that so basically what happens here you have plenty of models that are available for you based on your project requirement based on your cost based on your risk appetite based on your uh, time there's a project timeline so keeping all these factors into the mind you have to decide the project model that which fits well with your project so that's how you have to decide.